This episode is sponsored by City Traders Imperium. CTI is a prop trading firm looking for profitable Forex traders who need more capital. CTI will back its traders up to $2 million, which is the most in the industry, and thousands of traders worldwide are trading their capital remotely from their own home. It's the most flexible funding provider in the industry, where any strategy is welcome, and overnight or weekend positions are allowed. Plus, CTI doubles your account every time you hit 10% net gain, which you can scale up to $2 million. Click the link in the description to find out why CityTrader offer the best funded trader program in the industry, or visit citytradersimperium.com. Hey folks, Cam Hawkins here from Trading Nut. Welcome to a different, albeit educational and fun episode of Trading Nut. Now, um, basically, yeah, I raided Daniel Savage's live trading room. Room. Now, why on earth would I do that? Well, there's good reason. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a Trading View replay challenge with a guy called Matthew Todd. Now, Matthew unfortunately pulled out last minute while I was sleeping and booked in another guy called JP. So I turn up on the Zoom with JP, and JP's got his camera on, and I'm like, hang on a sec, is that Daniel Savage in the background? He goes, oh yeah, I'm in Daniel's house. And apparently JP's one of his mates. So uh, so anyway, we start doing the challenge. He gets kicked out of the chair by Daniel. Daniel jumps on. Unfortunately, doesn't do too well in the trading view challenge and says, come on to my live trading session. Have a look, trust me, you're gonna see some good trades. So anyway, that's what I did, I rated it, guys. And you're gonna get to have a sneak peek in that in a second, but before we do, I wanted to double check that it wasn't a one hit wonder, okay? I wanted to make sure that Daniel actually does this on a daily basis. So there was a guy I saw in the trading room who I managed to get hold of and asked him to come on and tell me what it's like. So you're gonna hear that first, then we're gonna jump into the trading room. You're gonna get to see Daniel break down a chart and you're also gonna get to see a few other things, a bit of the podcast that we started to do as well. And um, you're gonna get to find out how you can get access to the full thing. All right, guys, so first of all, let's hear from Haviel, who uh, who has been a member for a while. Right, I thought I'd get Haviel FX here on the show. Now, I saw him in Daniel's chat, uh, not his chat, in his live stream, and I thought, I had a meeting with him anyway, so I thought, like, let me just have a quick chat and find out, because I'm pretty sure he's been to more than one, and I've only been to one. I just want to find out what the other ones have been like in the past. So, uh, Haviel, quickly, um, how many do you reckon you've gone to of these uh, Daniel Savage FX uh, uh, live streams? So I've been to uh, most of them pretty much. Um, so if we have done, let's say, an example, um, they has done, let's say, 100. Uh, out of those 100, I've been just about 95% of them. Wow, uh, okay. So yeah. Out of, the 100, out of the 95 that you've been to, how often does he, does he do well? So, you know, um, I mean, his name says it all. Uh, he's in your savage. So, you know, um, he's actually a savage when it comes to the chart. Um, so, you know, there's have there's been times that we go a whole week, um, week and a half, you know, without losing a trade. Um, so, you know, his name says it all. He's he's really, really good at what he does. Um, his uh, his trading strategy, everything, um, everything that's, you know, I, I love getting into the into the uh, Zoom calls at night, you know. Um, I mean, he trade, you know, he trades live with four, five hundred people. Before he used to do more, but it was just, you know, a lot of scammers there. And now he, you know, he um, charged for, for the uh, Zoom calls. So you know, um, you know, I mean, all the students there are seeing results now, doing three, four hundred students every single night, live trading. So you know, um, if if he wasn't doing good. I'm sure none of them would have renewed uh, every month. So, you know, uh, so far he's doing great. Um, so, yeah, he's cool. uh, brilliant. Great okay. Superb. That's all I want to know. Someone who's been there for a lot longer than me, and I'm glad you, we actually had this call so that you could fill us in on what we've been missing out on. So, all right. Thanks, Shaville. Um Guys, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so it sounds like it's a really good room to be in, and there's probably a reason, good reason, that there's like a few hundred people turning up every day to watch him trade live. Now, guys, um, this is what I thought it was going to be like. In actual fact, this is what it was like. So basically what we're doing is right now, uh, we took an entry over here. Uh, the second this candle had a 30 minute candle confirmation over here. Price did come back and respect over here. 
And once it started to open up bullish, we did take a buy, spread put us up here. I was anticipating price was gonna repeat itself when it broke this level of resistance. As it did not come back for retracement, we do have a small stop loss due to the fact that price might come back for the retracement as we approach the London session. But you know, we all know history does repeat itself. So I did not wanna miss out on this big move over here to this level right here for about 30 pips. So we do have a small little eight pip stop loss just in case we don't get the retracement. But um, if price does come back, stop, stop for the retracement, I will be looking for buys over here. I will run my FIB from here to here, and then I will see what is up. Unless price breaks back down below here, then I'll be looking for shorts. Uh, but other than that, I'm still very bullish, and um, price is kind of struggling right now at this point. It's kind of very indecisive. So we are in a very, very small position. I am risking less than half a position on this trade, just so that way I can scale in with one position here. Uh, with entries over here. So could have played the patient game, but we wanted to go aggressive tonight. Just got out of our freaking win streak, man. On a spike. Well, not a spike, but like kind of like a fake out, man. We are in a nice little win streak. And then uh, <coughs> let me go, <coughs> excuse me. I gotta stop smoking these electronic cigarettes. But um, uh, what was it? It was, uh, what was it? We had a, I had took a sell over here yesterday and price just kind of just mopped up and then it just destroyed down and it's so funny because the same thing happened to us yesterday is the the end of our win streak i had taken a sell over here like once we started breaking this low and then price just mopped up and then mopped down so it's funny as hell how that happened two times in a row yeah i thought that was pretty funny it just kind of ruined our win streak i was like damn dude but uh, we were on a nice little win streak that was a good push. So you guys still got half position in this, or you didn't close the other half? Did no, I didn't half? close half my trade unless it would hit eight twenty. But um, I'm still in there. I threw a very small position. I threw like a four lot in here just in case. Because <sighs> yesterday, man, yesterday was kind of brutal, dude. Not gonna lie, um, we missed out on like three beautiful entries, dude. Um, I wanted to take it really passive, and. Um, since I wasn't, since I was being really passive, I missed out on about two, three beautiful entries. So um, today I'm just like, you know what? I'll take my, I'll take my, I'll take those trades. You know, I'll take those impulsive yeah. trades, little aggressive ones, but I'll just lower the lot size. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Cause we also have a real nice, you know, clean traffic on this side over here. So, you know, I, I, I'm anticipating price will come back correct this whole entire move. So that'd be kind of cool. And then make our way, work, work our way to targets, 140, uh, 400 again. And from there, uh, I think we had a 700 level. Yeah, 140 to 700. So let's see, man. Uh, the goal is to see how we can win this trade. If I do catch about, if I do catch 20, 30 pips in this trade, um, I'll probably call it a night and then come back during the New York session. Uh, I don't want to over trade, but, uh, we might scale in again, might one more scale in, depends. Let's see how it is. Now, it wasn't all trading, like, this was my favorite part. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> is that you, brother? Is that me? Yeah, is that you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, some people think it's kind of funny, but, um... Like we take these impulse trades, uh, we take these one minute Fibonacci setups sometimes. And, um, you know, basically we, we, we'll we take these one minute Fibonacci setups sometimes. Sometimes I like to use them as confluence more than taking them as the actual setup. So I did have a feeling we were gonna come back down and um, running from here to here on the one minute on the Fib, it was a seven, six, four rejection from this bottom wave to this bottom wave. And um, it was a 764 rejection, respecting on the FIB for continuation, which I like to use this one minute FIB uh, in confluence with the, with the one hours, right? Meaning like, it'll determine if, you know, it'll kind of give me a little bit of confidence that I could hold my trade or get into the trade or, you know, just give me confidence to be in the trade. You know what I'm mm, saying? Yeah. For situations like this, when the brand new hour, when the brand new hour candles open, you know what I'm saying? Because when they open, you know, we always usually see, you know, the low before the high or the high before the low. So I'll drop down to the one minute and I'll see a situation like that, where if it respects a little one minute fib, uh, catching basically it, that wick and then push back up, 
uh, you know, I like to stay in the trade or, you know, get in the trade or hold the trade. But um, I'll stoop down to that one minute level just to see if I can hold my trade with confidence. So I'm still pretty mm -hmm. confident. But then again, I'm also still very, you know, alert. So price starts to come down here and break this because right here at this wake bottom right here is the 764, which is my last hope on the Fibonacci for, you know, a longs or shorts in the way that I want to go. So, for example, if price breaks this level, then I think it's a goner. I think it's going to melt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So since price yeah. did respect this 764 right over here exactly, mm. as you can see, before it pulled back up, uh, that right there, that little one minute pullback was basically just the one hour low before the one hour high. So, I mean, hopefully it does get respected. We've seen it happen multiple times. But then again, we never know. Every single setup is usually the same, but every single outcome is usually different sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right now, this five minute is disrespecting this uh, eight SMA, which is kind of giving me a, a feeling that price will come back down and retest this one, yeah. which will kind of give me uh, a feeling of, you know, discomfort in holding this trade because then it'll technically mean we're breaking under and trading under the eight SMA on this one, which most likely price will come back down and melt to retest this S this 50 SMA, correct? So this 15 minute candle close bearish as shit, creating a minor resistance. So as long as we can break the, the body of this candle, I'd be pretty happy. But if we were to come back down, that'd be, that'd be very terrible. Mm. How did you get started in it? How did you get started <clears> in it? <throat> well, uh, originally, man, you know, when I used to work at the car wash, uh, you know, there was this one kid that, that would come by, you know, he had a Maserati, he had a Ghibli, and um, he was about my age, you know what I'm saying? He was about my age. I think he was about a year older than me. And I asked him what he did for a living, right? Cause he'd always wash the car. Uh, so he told me he was a day trader, you know, that he traded a uh, foreign exchange and this, this and that, you know, he didn't even call it Forex. He's like, oh, I trade in the foreign exchange market. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if somebody asked me what I do, I'll say, I trade Forex, you know, I trade currencies. You know, he's like, oh, I trade in the foreign exchange. So, you know, it's a funny guy. And um, dude, uh, I, I got, I ended up wanting to get involved. He told me to go on YouTube. So I started to look onto YouTube and everything. And the only thing that would come up was like penny stocks and stocks and stuff like that. You know, I tried to see what's up with uh, Timothy Sykes, but you yeah. know, after doing his little five day homework for free, turns out I had to pay like a few thousand dollars for the course. And uh, I was kind of like butthurt for that and had that type of money. And um, he's been on the show. <laughs> Timothy. He's been on, on uh, it wasn't called trading. That was called 52 traders. My first podcast. He was on your, you got him on the podcast? Yeah, I've got him on the podcast. Yeah. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, dude, uh, I tried to I tried to get involved from there and dude, it kind of led to from the penny stocks thing to the actual Forex. And um, you know, I started to Google the hashtag Forex and dude, Forex four or five years ago is very different from what it is today. You know what I mean? At least from when I got involved with Instagram and stuff like that, like the only people I could find were people in the UK. You know, that was the only type of education that I could find was people yeah. from literally the UK. You know, I couldn't even find, I didn't know about KeyBanks. I don't know about Ryan. They've been in the game for more than four or five years. So, you know, it was, it's kind of weird that I didn't find out about them until about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. And, um, you know, it was kind of like a journey for me. You know, I, I got involved, you know, trying to take these little courses from here and there. Um, basically uh signals you know we all feel all taking signals and um little learn and earn programs and stuff like that everything was just way more expensive back in the days for some reason but um yeah dude i ended up uh kind of progressing with the time you know i stopped doing signals you know i started to kind of take other courses uh about three three and a half years ago uh i took a a course on um on like uh, supply and demand and support and resistance and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. It helped out a lot to understand why price sometimes does this and then does that and, you know, or sometimes does this. And, um, you know, from a person that just kind of just went from signals only to kind of wanting to be self-sufficient, um, you know, it was kind of cool for that. And then I took a, a Fib Zone Lie course. I, I don't know if you've heard of him. Fib Zone Lie? No, I haven't heard yeah, of that. Fib Zone Lie, his name is Joseph. Right. Yeah, I took his course about a, a little over three years ago. And um, from there, man, I just kind of started to to play with the Fibonacci. 
and um that that was pretty good for me that was pretty cool you know running the fibonacci with the support and resistance and um i started taking a i took another course from this other guy from england and you know his levels were a lot different in how he read them so from there it was kind of like this le you know i'm just really fast forwarding it for you because it's a very long you know it's a very long yeah, journey yeah. but you know kind of getting in with the education you know fast forwarding it you know i started to uh kind of like feed this hunger that I had for education because I just felt like the more that I knew the more that you know I was getting closer to being who I want to be you know what I'm saying yeah and um <clears throat> it did kind of suck because I did spend a lot of money as well on recycled courses you know I was like oh look I'm gonna get this course here but the only difference between this course and this guy is this guy had a green Lambo and this one had a purple one you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was always the same shit left and right. The only difference yeah. was he's got a green Lamborghini. The other guy's got a purple one. So, you know, it was kind of upsetting for a lot of uh, money, in my opinion. I, I don't think it's money lost, but in my opinion, I'm going to go with the money lost because it was always the same thing. So I was always uh, one of those people that I always wanted to keep funding my education and always buying courses and trying to learn from everybody who I thought in, in the eyes of me, at least, were you know, doing something with this Forex trading thing. So, you know, as the years come by, man, all the education you've taken, you know, all everything that you've seen and, you know, it starts to kind of click together and it starts to mold together. And hold up, if this trade comes back to entry, dude, I'm out, dude, honestly. Like, I'm not with this a pip drama shit. You know what I'm saying? a pips profit again, a pips melt. Like, not with it. Hold up. Let's see, let's see. All right, I'm closing, guys. It's not worth it anymore. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's pretty good call. Yeah, I'm not with this a trade, a pips, a pips, a pips. Not fuck that up. So trade one was break even, guys. Eight pips, eight pips, and then he basically took it off the table. Good thing he did because it did start to tank, but it also went down to the level that he mentioned at the start of the show, which was a bit further down. And he entered again on a second trade. So we'll see that and then we'll wrap up. Um, all right, boys. Stop loss to 139. 6, 6.15. Let's go targets. 140, Tell you the go. I'll give you the go. Give me a second. Took a buy, boys. And entry at 7.18. Price comes back down and breaks under here. I will be closing half my position, boys. The only thing I don't like, to be honest, is the flip of this candle at this level. Yeah, the, in the I would like to go back above here yeah. so I can be fully confident. But yeah, um, I exactly. feel like this is the, I feel like this is the lowest point we'll catch GJ if we are bullish. So I mean, let's see if we can catch that 140 200 level. Nice little 4.24 risk to reward ratio. Probably swing a, a runner. Yeah, it's gonna uh, go. Let's see, dude. I don't like how price is reacting over here on the yeah. one minute. To be honest, this one minute candle is most likely gonna bleed, dude. We need to we need a solid close above this eight SMA, and then I could I'd most likely feel a lot confident after this huge nut. At least thirty minute. Oh my god, no S gains mode. I like that how it did uh, come back up and reject this fifty okay. SMA. So I do have a strong feeling it'll keep going up. So let's see what's up, boys. Let's see what's up. So far, what are we? We're down about a pip and a half. <clears throat> I really wanted to take an entry here the second it flipped bullish, but it did take, like mm -hmm. once it broke the high, but it just mopped up way too quick, dude. Yeah. I got lucky. Oh my God, if this thing reverses at eight pips again, I swear to God, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm retiring yeah. trading. It didn't take me in. <laughs> are you kidding? I thought I was in. It didn't take my. It didn't trigger my limit order. You're kidding me. So you trade only orders? Uh, no, no, no. I do, I, I do all three. So I've built a little tool that does that gets me in with the right percentage and stuff. And um, okay. so I do sometimes limit, sometimes stop, sometimes um, market. <coughs> Damn it! I thought I was in. I thought I was in. It literally went straight through my order. I must have hit it too late. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's where I would have I mean, got out. That was I would have got out there at one to one. Spike again. <laughs> that was my one to one. Anyway. But um, uh, yeah, dude, like, girl, that month was insane, dude. Like, that month was just insanely insane, insane. 
Oh wait, this is what this is what we do. We get this uh we get this uh bottle right here and we hit the tab when we hit the TP. You know what oh, I mean? Really? Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Alright, so stop Good breaking team. boys. Oh man, I can't believe Highly. that. I was like, why is the price right, the so price not wow, this thing out? is flying? Nice 15 pips. I'm still holding this thing. All right, guys, so there we go. So he had one break even, one win, and that was the one day of trading. I think he was going to trade the New York. I don't know if he did or not. But um, what I've got here in front of me is the chart. So this is the trade we took. It was around about, uh, around about here that we got in, somewhere around here. This was the winning trade. So the break even trade was, I believe, somewhere around here. Got broke, yeah, got in here and got broken even there. Uh, then we came in again at this point around here. And Daniel got us one to one, I believe, in this hour here. Uh, and the rest of the guys who wanted to trail it came back, took them out at break even. But he was right. He was right. It went to 14,200, which is what he said in the video just before. Uh, went to 14,200 today. He also said, I think this is about the lowest GJ is going to go for the day. Okay, that was the almost the lowest point when you look at that there was only two little points right at the very end of the day it got a little bit lower but in general it was about the lowest point of the day so guys he knows what he's doing go and check him out in the um i suppose on instagram it's fx daniel savage and uh, hopefully we'll get him on a podcast here in the future but in the meantime he did and look there was two hours of footage here uh, i've condensed it down because it was just so much. He did actually do a full-on interview as to how he got started and everything, a lot of detail uh, in the full two-hour thing. I didn't include it here because it is probably half a podcast in itself. So if you do want to check that out and everything else that went on, I've actually got a new thing here on the Trading Night YouTube channel, and it's something you can go and check out. It's a membership thing. So you've got to pay a little bit of money. You get access to the membership uh, content, this will be the first thing up there, but I'll endeavor to add at least one thing a month for the time being until we really start ramping it up. And then there's going to be really cool stuff in there, guys. So go and check it out. There should be a link underneath this video to get access to the full uh, two-hour session that we had here. And uh, and also there's even the stuff at the very start, um, them taking the mickey out of me. <laughs> there's a whole lot of stuff in there, guys. So go and check it out. All right, thanks for watching.